Hey, this is a paid request for Levi. Thank you so much for that. And this is for the comparison between the Flashpoint Paradox and the Flash from 2023. And I'm not even kidding. I gotta go take an aspirin pill because they give Ezra Miller's dumbass putting babies into microwaves and killing all Michael Keaton and all this stuff and how this was so much better and tighter paced plot darker the Batman in this shoots someone in the head bullet hole and all I got a headache I got a fucking headache from Ezra Miller's stupid movie and stupid ass number one I think Flashpoint understood the Flash more as a character uh, the actor who voiced the character did a much more admirable job. The Flash you could take seriously as a hero, you could take seriously as a character, while The Flash of 2023 was a bad joke. I would say it's a joke, but it's a bad joke. It wasn't having stupid jokes about spaghetti and how obsessed he is with spaghetti, or any of that sort. I also didn't have a lead actor with a whole bunch of issues on being a piece of trash human being, but even if you take that out of the equation, the Flash from 2023 was annoying, was irritating. His younger self was a terrible laugh that would make babies cry. And the doves explode before and after they fly. And Flashpoint, they took the same type of story and they made it faster paced where this is only 80 some minutes long not two and a half hours long I find that really strange that they were able to tell a more cohesive tightly paced darker story in an hour and 20 some minutes than this new movie did in two hour two and a half hours 2.30 I can't remember the exact details there's two and a half hours. That's just mind boggling to me. Mind boggling. Because they both have the Flash dealing with an event, showing his powers as a hero, thinking about his dead mom, going back in time, changing things, creating this alternate reality, alternate universe, however you want to put it, alternate timeline. Where at the end, he's got to go back and fix it. <clears throat> but in the Flash 2023, how we show the Flash as a superhero, him rescuing a bunch of CGI babies straight out of Ally McBeal, where at one point he rescues a dog where the, dar's, the dog is fallen, and then the very next shot, it's already on a gurney. We don't even see him getting the dog and putting it on there. Piss poor editing. This anime film doesn't have it. This this anime film is better edited than a two three hundred million dollar picture live action film. Oh, and then the Flash twenty twenty three puts a baby in a microwave to save it. I had some guy go, well, he did turn the microwave on. And there was another guy who goes, well, in Dead Alive, they put a baby in a blender. I'm like, you're comparing a horror comedy where a zombie baby got put into... The fact that one person compared The Flash to Peter Jackson's Dead Alive shows... <laughs> I'm like, do you hear, do you read what you're typing, dude? Do you read what you're typing? In this film, oh, he goes up against Captain Cold and Boomerang and Heat Wave and he's holding his own. And then he's got his own friends, the Justice League. Says it'll be a big part of the rest of the story. Shows how involved they are, but shows the Flash and him being commendable, what he can do. 
Also have, helps you have a good voice cast. Cameron Conroy as Batman. Nathan Fillion as Green Lantern. Terry Alvis for The Princess Bride as Aquaman. Uh, Kevin McKidd, who I remember uh, from Dog Soldiers, the lead in that. He was Thomas Wayne. And also, this was a, another thing. Flash 2023, he knew what he did. And he knew what was going on. Like, he knew he went back and saved his mom. He knew. So right then and there, you knew whose fault it was. It was the Flash's fault. But Flashpoint, it was this mystery of, he wakes up and all of a sudden this stuff's changed and he doesn't understand why. And he thinks, oh, it must be this bad guy's fault. Reverse Flash, it's their fault. And then realization that, oh my god, I did this. That makes it much more of an stronger point to hell with this tight pacing of, well, why doesn't the Flash just go back in time and change it already? Because he doesn't know that it was his fault, because his memories have altered because of the timeline. He doesn't know that until much later. Flash 2023, they go, well, he knows it, and then he's fine with it, and then he's doing all this stupid stuff, like, he goes to see the parents, even though it's, he knows it's not his timeline. He knows his younger self is out there. In fact, his younger self is coming home soon. In fact, he sees him out the window now. But I don't come in here and do all this stupid shit because the Flash in 2023 is a fucking imbecile. He's an idiot. He's a moron of a character. Flash from Paradise said, let's avoid Flash doing a bunch of stupid shit. Yeah, that would make a lot more sense. <clears throat> And the plot in Paradox is so much more interesting. In this, it's a world where there is a Wonder Woman, and there is a Superman, and there's all these other heroes, but Wonder Woman and Aquaman are in a war with each other. Ready to kill. Aquaman and Wonder Woman were an item, and Wonder Woman killed Aquaman's queen, and blah blah blah. And just how ruthless they are. Wonder Woman killing Steve Trevor. Uh, she even kills <laughs> Shazam. Like when he's a kid. I mean this fucking movie kills a kid. Wonder Woman murders a kid. When Shazam. Shazam. And there's the kid. She like chokes him out. Breaks his neck or something. That's pretty fucking dark and serious circumstances. More than anything in the 2023 Flash. That's some ballsy shit. Which is probably one of the reasons why, oh, we can't have Wonder Woman. We can't have her, Gal Gadot, do that. In fact, she, let's just have her do a cameo just long enough to have that music. Nee, 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 you know, her stupid theme music pop up. Flashback Paradise cared about a story. Flash 2023 cared about nostalgia. Flashpoint was characters and story over anything. Flash 2023 was nostalgia, member berries, and do you remember this? Do you remember this? Over story or characters. Do you remember Michael Keaton? Michael Keaton's Batman, guys. He's backed as Batman. He said, I'm Batman. He said, let's get nuts. Do you remember that? Yeah, I also remember him teaching a lesson to the two stupid flashes with spaghetti and spaghetti noodles. I also remember you tell Michael Keaton more than once. And the last time you see, the last time you're going to see Michael Keaton as Batman is dead in Ezra Miller's arms. That's such a great ending to that character. Well, uh, yeah, he's alive, yeah, off screen that you never see. You assume it, you rightfully can understandably assume it. But the fact that Martin Keaton's Batman is treated with such disrespect that, well, they filmed it and they deleted it because they figured they're probably not going to use him anymore. Uh, that would be at least some kind of respect that the last time the audience can see this character is in this element. 
even one shot of him. If you want to go with the whole nostalgia train, how about an element of him and Gotham coming in, fighting crime, and... or something like that. But no. Instead, it gotta be a crazy looking guy with a big full beard, gray beard, gray hair, looking like a fucked up version of Bob Ross. So his double can fly around the kitchen and then fall face first into some food. Because one of the Flash, of course, moves out of the way. On the flip side, this made a more interesting story where Bruce Wayne died and it was Thomas Wayne. It was the dad. And the dad had a different mindset. The dad used guns. The dad was willing to kill. The dad was ready, willing to murder. This Thomas Wayne version was a much darker, was more like the Punisher. I mean, even shoots perf Zoom, vo the villain voiced by C. Thomas Howell, in the fucking head. Bull in the head. Surprised he didn't go up and fuck the bullet hole. I mean, this is hardcore of a movie for PG-13. To have a drink to that. Like, this is a... I'm surprised that this guy PG-13. Kids did kill. People get shot in the fucking head. Other characters die. Holy shit. It gives some interesting moral you know, platitudes of it. Like, even, the, even though the bad guy's being an asshole, he's telling Flash, you know... You're remembering this, and you didn't go back to save JFK. You didn't go back to stop Hitler. You went back to save your mommy. Now, the only thing I could say I have an issue with Flashpoint is the Flash doesn't really get to do much of a fight at the end. Uh, pretty much, the villain beats the shit out of him, and... Like, the Flash can hold his own, but then ultimately, Zoom breaks his leg. And then, Zoom gets shot in the head by Thomas Wayne. And that's a great moment for this Batman, for this version, this Thomas character. But the Flash, I mean, the fact he was able to do it himself. But even Flash 2023, it was, the I guess, the younger Flash sort of just taken the hit and then the other flash the goofy looking crystal flash probably the one crystal meth he just dissipates I mean I'd rather have the Thomas Wayne over that and then him giving the letter so that the flash can go back and give it to Bruce and then Bruce reads it he's tearful you're a hell of a messenger Thought that was a nice moment. I mean, Bruce got more of a nice moment here than the new one where, even if you if you're a fan of the Ben Affleck Batman, you don't even get that. Like, we're robbed of Michael Keaton final moments of Batman, other than him dying. Ben Affleck's Batman, you're not even given a final moment because he's still gone. Instead, it's George Clooney. George fucking Clooney. Just again, it's about references. We got Christopher Reeve CGI. We got CGI Helen Slater. We got CGI Nicholas Cage fighting the spider. This is an appearance by George Reeves. This is an appearance by blah blah blah. I'm surprised they didn't have the Flash from the 90s. I'm surprised they didn't have... I think they had an appearance. I think they had Wonder Woman. I think. Maybe not. Can't remember. But this was about it. Just, do you remember this? But it's not just references. It's because of Spider-Man, the the third one. No way home, because that made over a billion dollars. So DC said we need our No Way Home. How can we do that? Well, Flash. Time, time can maybe some deal with dimensions as well. Thus, we could show all these appearances. Oh my god. 
Same with you know when Marvel did Doctor Strange, multi, you know, multiverse of madness. Oh my God! There's Professor Xavier, Patrick Stewart, or at least a version of it. Yeah, and you respect him by him just getting his neck fucking broken by the villain, who then was supposed to feel sorry and was supposed to be fine with her being a hero later on. All oh, the same woman that took control over a fucking town and pretty much tortured a town for months because she was having issues. Get some tampons for your period blood. Uh, find a coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. Strawly witch. Doesn't excuse you torturing a fucking town, keeping them in stasis, pretty much. Stasis where they can't move. Almost ready for a permanent sleep for how many months? Does Fuse you kill most, kill some of the fucking heroes like Mr. Fantastic? Whether it's another version or not, why would you think anyone would ever like the Star Witch again when they killed Patrick Stewart and Xavier, at least a version of him? I'm sorry, going off tangent, but just. I don't get it. But anyway, getting back to this. Flashpoint Paradox, like I said, is more tightly paced. It's darker. It's more ballsy. It's more concise story. Yeah, maybe it would have been nice to have a little bit more emotional scenes with him and the death of his mom. A little bit more. I think there's about 10 minutes you could have put in there. Where, again, maybe a little bit more, even more in the beginning about him and his mom. Maybe a flashback of what he did and maybe he found his mom's killer. And then you see who the killer was. There are maybe a little bit moments here and there, but... Overall, this was, a, like, this was, this was satisfying. And the Amazons versus the Atlanteans made for a much more interesting backdrop of epic proportions than seeing Zod yet again. Man of Steel Part 2. And yes, it, it worked that you had Superman, but seeing Superman in such a scrawny, different look because he was kept by the government... I wish he was utilized a bit more in the third act. Although, although he does fuck up Aquaman's arm, to be fair. But I still thought that worked better than the Supergirl they had, which I didn't even have a problem with the actress, but just, okay, she's in there to fight Zod and just get killed 87 times. You've been hired to die. And because of like... And then, if it's... Because it does this weird thing where it's... It's not just changing time, but it's, well, this universe and this universe, you guys met together. So what happened in the Supergirl universe when everything went back together? Did she go back to being trapped by the government? Did she go back to escaping or somehow getting out by other people, but she dies from Zod? Seems like whatever place she went back to, she's fucked. But the movie was too stupid enough to not realize that. Here, it was more interesting with how they dealt with the other DC characters and how, with this one change, how Nathan Fillion didn't have powers, you know, Green Lantern instead, he was the pilot ready to pilot the spaceship. Uh, Lex Luthor goes to see Aquaman, but then Aquaman kills his ass. Uh, Cyborg wants to start up the Justice League, and Batman doesn't want to join it. It's 
just dark and violent and I said pretty surprising and it's funny how a lot of times I talk about pacing a lot of times I talk about how movies are too long this film I wish was longer because I was enjoying it that's actually a pretty good nitpick to have that I want to see more I wanted to see more like if this film hell if this film was again 10 50 minutes longer I don't think I would have an issue with it at all But no, let's have the new Flash be two and a half hours. So again, we can have the younger Flash. He went out using his powers and he's butt-ass naked. Isn't that funny? Yeah, and I forgot to laugh. Maybe I'm laughing through my butt cheeks. Oh no, that's a fart. Just like the Flash 2023 farted at the box office. Stunned so much that everyone left the fucking movie theater. Thus, you didn't need your box office receipts. Or ticket sales. And then became a fucking bomb. <laughs> so yeah. Flash War Paradox. Thumbs up. Unless you want to see the Flash put babies in microwaves. I can't. That just. That is up there with the basketball scene. And Catwoman. And just one of the. You know, the, the bottle of piss. Jojo Piss, anti... What the fuck was that? Batman v Superman? Anti-Lee, anti... Bottle of... Jug of... I forgot what it was. It was a... Peach tea. Granny's peach tr tea. Granny's peach tea, but it was a fucking thing of piss. Here's this bottle, is Jug of Piss, ready for... to explode. Granny's peach tea. Never thought a big bottle of piss would be such a big part of a Batman vs. Superman movie, but anyway. There you go. These are the people working in Hollywood today. You wonder why I don't shed any tears. Oh, the actor or the writer have a strike. Good. Hopefully for years. So maybe a hundred smarter writers can enter the fucking equation, can enter the competition. Wouldn't that be nice? Anyway, if you're um, all like me and the Flash 2023 movie disappoint you, you hate it, uh, I keep showing this because it deserves it. Check out this movie. Be much more better palette for your plate. See you guys later. Bye-bye.